Who are you doing it for? I'm doing it for Aiden. Aiden's dead! He's dead. You should be here, Daddy. Looking after us. White said that we're trying to protect our form. I know. Well, what about protect us? Protecting our families? I can't believe that you. Flanagan better have some well, answers. Before this, you know we'll get some answers, hopefully. <laughs> Chief Constable, I see you now. grateful to have this opportunity to talk to you all today personally and to try to reassure you after some of the things that have been said. I know you'll be concerned about the Fulton case and so I wanted to brief you myself. Look, it's very difficult. The world of intelligence is murky. And trying to anticipate the intentions of a terrorist organization like the real IRA is difficult. We need good, reliable information. A good informer is worth his weight in gold, but a bad one is a disaster. And Kevin Fulton was a bad one. He made things up for money trying to tell us what he thought we wanted to hear. So we cut him off. There was nothing else to do. But he said he knew. He warned you. He knew there was something big on. Well, I'm sorry, obviously, that he's been given the prominence in the media that he has, but I can assure you that there's nothing in this. Nothing. I've looked into it myself. Shouldn't there be an independent opinion on this? The police ombudsman, aren't they looking into it? Well, the ombudsman is there to deal with routine complaints, to give the communities a stake in policing after Good Friday. Yeah, but what is, what is the point of the ombudsman if, if it isn't looking into the things that we want investigated? What we're talking about is intelligence. MI5, special branch. It's not the proper area for the ombudsman. It's far too sensitive. Surely you understand that. Well, what about the guard of surveillance man in Dublin? He's telling the same stories. Well, obviously I can't speak for the Garda. And Detective Sergeant White is not one of my officers. I, I think he was suspended. Wasn't he, George? Michael, can I call you Michael? I understand the frustration that you all feel, that we all feel when something like this comes up. I just wish that you had come to me earlier with your concerns. I could have saved you the trouble. Michael, I know you want progress. So do I. We all do. But you're scaling down the investigation. Manpower adjustments are always reviewed as any investigation progresses. There's nothing abnormal in that. Do you seriously think that I would do anything to jeopardize the inquiry? You have to trust us. Otherwise, what else is there? Did Wade not tell you he was in trouble? I felt I could trust him. Well, we need to be more careful about who we trust. Yeah, we should have checked right, our facts. Who's the facts. Flanagan's telling us the whole story about the Lawrence. Fulton? Another chief constable's lying, is he? Is the chief constable, for God's sake? We set up this organisation to help the police, not put them in the dock. You tell me what he's done. If it's not true, then where's his answers? So, what are you saying? That he's not doing his best? No! No, I don't think he is doing his best! He's trying to catch the man who killed our daughter. He's all we've got.
Thanks, thanks. You think we're being told the whole truth. You're more stupid and naive than I thought. I won't be a part of this anymore. The company to support each other, not listen to this. Oh, you wait. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael. Don't. Don't! Listen, please. Don't you start. I don't stand by. And let them get away with it. And if I have to sue the RUC and the British government, I'll do it on my own. It's not working, is it? None of it. It's been a difficult day. I mean, the whole campaign. What have we achieved? We have achieved... No, I mean, Stanley, what have we actually achieved? We've started the civil action. We've started nothing. We just talked about starting it, that's all. No, Michael, come on, that's not true. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set up meetings in London next month. We need a million pounds, that's what we need. They're closing down the investigation. They're never going to catch them. Never. They're still shooting and bombing. They're still walking around the place, drinking in bars, having a good life, laughing at us. I mean, there's been over 2,000 unsolved murders since the beginning of the Troubles. Why should we be any different? I mean... Maybe they're right. Maybe us pursuing our campaign is destroying the peace process. Hey, you, you can't start thinking oh, like face that. Face it, Stanley, we're getting nowhere. We have supported each other. We've kept each other going. Is that not enough to be going on with? Not anymore, Stanley. Staying home now.
Thought I'd come back, try and work again, you know? We planned it all together, you know. 15 years, then he'd take over, he said. Oh, I got too old to get out of a chair. No, it's okay, it's okay. It wasn't just my son, you know. He was my workmate. Everything. He was everything to me. And when I'm in the house, and the three of you are talking together, still doing all the things you've always done, and I tell myself it's unfair. I tell myself it's not true. Inside, I feel he meant more to me. And I know that's off. To feel like that. Because I know how much you loved him. I can't feel the way you feel. Only the way I feel. Patsy, uh, I think I'll just go down to the birches and see what's going on. The, uh, the ombudsman's given a report today. Yes, I know. Saw it in the paper. Well, it won't be long. Just think uh, I should show some solidarity, you know? All right. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming here this morning. My name is I Sam Pollock. I'm the chief the executive for the police ombudsman's office in Northern Ireland. I want to tell you what Much our investigation is actually thanks. about. I think you all know about the Sunday People article in which a man calling himself <coughs> Kevin Fulton claimed that he had told the police about Omar. We felt it essential to investigate these allegations, not least to show the people in Northern Ireland that we are serious about a new era in policing. I want to introduce you now to the police ombudsman, Nuala O'Long, who will take you further into the presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. The Omer bomb was the most grave and exceptional crime in the history of Northern Ireland, and the failure to bring prosecutions shames us all. I want to start by saying that the people responsible for the Omar bombing are the terrorists who planned and executed the atrocity. <coughs> Nothing should ever detract from that unequivocal fact. 
We have established that Kevin Fulton did pass on information relating to the alleged dissident terrorist activity to his special branch handlers. The chief constable has said that Kevin Fulton's evidence was disregarded because it was unreliable. But I have to tell you that when we examined special branch records, we found no formal written record of Kevin Fulton being unreliable in the period up to August 1998. He is graded as a reliable source. I am satisfied that further action should have been taken on that information. It is clear that Special Branch did not pass it on to the Omer bomb investigation team. A large crowd gathered at the Silver Birch Hotel in Omer. The police ombudsman is meeting the Omer families to discuss her long-awaited report. We'll bring you more news as soon as we have it. More worryingly, in the course of our review, it became clear to us that uh, special branch were also in receipt of other information, which indicated that an attack on Omer was imminent. Not least, an anonymous call on the 4th of August warned that an attack would be made on police in Omer on the 15th of August, 1998. <laughs> I have to tell you that these warnings were not followed up prior to the bombings. Now, significant evidential opportunities were most certainly lost when Special Branch did not share the intelligence with the senior investigator. In girls. Now, this is only one of a number of concerns we have about the conduct of the inquiry. We found 360 intelligence records which we say could have relevance to the Omer bombing. Of these documents, only 22% have been made available to the investigation team. The book logging all terrorist warnings at Omer disappeared without explanation. Whose fault was that? We don't have any satisfactory answer to that question. Two months into the investigation, the investigation team was reduced by 42%. Shame! Shame! It's not possible to say what impact action taken as a result <clears throat> might have had or whether this action would have prevented the Omer bomb. But it is little wonder that out of this uncertainty, the doubt and mistrust and conspiracy arise. <clears throat> I have concluded with great sadness that the judgment and leadership of the chief constable has been seriously flawed. <laughs> the victims, you, the families, the people of Omer, as well as the officers of the RUC, have been let down by defective leadership, poor judgment, and a lack of urgency. <clears throat> and as a result, the chances of detaining and convicting the Omer bombers has been significantly reduced. The man's a disgrace! He should resign! Yes, he should resign! He should resign. That's the honour! Mr. Wilson, 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 Mr. Wilson,
we have fought this far and to hear what we have just heard is completely right. devastating. You have to say something. Please. They're waiting for you. Mr. Breslin! Morse. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Okay. Mr. Wilson Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher, please. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher. <laughs> Mrs. O'Long is the first person to tell us the full story of the OMA investigation and why there have been no prosecutions. And we'd like to thank her for that. The day our loved ones lost their lives and our families were torn apart, we were told that everything would be done to bring their killers to justice. To learn today that they have failed us before the bomb, after the bomb, and are still failing us now. To have that knowledge, however distressing, however shocking, means that we can at last move forward. I would like to announce today that we will be pursuing our own legal action against the real IRA, against those who support and fund it, and those who are responsible for this dreadful atrocity. But more than that, we would like to call into account the security forces and the police and the politicians in London, Belfast and Dublin who have promised us so much but have so far singularly failed to deliver. We speak not just for ourselves. We speak for the victims of the troubles of whatever tradition. And all those victims of terror, wherever it happens. We will not go away. We will not be quiet. We will not be forgotten. I do not accept either the broad thrust or most of the detail of the Ombudsman's criticism. And any